Good morning, folks. We've got a tremendous top story today. Quick analysis of the China weather anomaly. And of course, we've got small CMEs on their way to Earth. Starting at spaceweathernews.com, we find the last day on the sun has the last bigger flare event up north, tiny filaments snap just ahead of it on the south, and then a move towards more quiet conditions. We took three M-class solar flares and 12 C-class flares the last few days, numerous CMEs. Let's watch the entire sequence from May 21st on through to this morning. Our analysis yesterday showed that some of those CMEs are heading at Earth, setting the stage for the third test of the solar cycle and the calming solar wind and geomagnetic conditions are giving us a nice blank piece of paper. We also showed there hadn't been analysis yet from NOAA, but that has changed this morning. They don't predict these impacts to occur until tomorrow night, which is a bit late for the first CMEs from the 21st, but I can't truly fault their ultimate KP forecast of 5 or 6, which is a level 1 or 2 geomagnetic storm condition. Their endless spiral now shows four of the eruptions. There were actually six, but they indeed show them slowing and combining into one impact tomorrow. We'll see if that's correct. I bet they arrive in succession starting earlier than tomorrow night. And once again, no doomsday, but if it hits KP7, it could produce those same electrical troubles we've seen with other strong events. Quick look at quakes. We showed the Congo volcano yesterday morning and it followed with enhanced seismicity. We are also watching this cluster in Nicaragua, sort of popped up out of nowhere yesterday. Folks, when those flares began on the sun, as you will recall, the high pressure global electric circuit downward flow gets surged, which surges the low pressure storms from there. Energy was noticeable amplifying the first named storm of the Atlantic season and to the east of that, the mid-Asian high took the juice, but it surged down hard and created a monstrous wind event that can be seen as shock fronts pushing away from the China storm zone, indicating the major intrusion. This was from the storm driving interaction in China, where those 21 marathoners in shorts and thin shirts got hit with hail, freezing rain and gale force winds. 21 died on the mountain in the unexpected freak weather event, which I'm sure just coincidentally happened during the solar flare uptick and in the atmospheric electricity pattern that is known to occur. Now folks, there was a very cool update on Earth's catastrophe cycle, and many of you have already seen it. The rebirth of modern catastrophism, according to keyword search statistics, is marked by the video we did back in 2018, showing the declassified documents and finding the redacted portions later to complete the story. Well, it was actually Jimmy from Bright Insight who made the topic ultra popular by sharing our video and then diving deep into Atlantis on his own, the greatest victim of the last cycle. Well, 48 months later and a thousand sessions in the gym later for Jimmy apparently and his mental workouts still besting his bench press. He found another declassified document which described a mission under Project Magnet which directly relates to his Atlantis study and the last great disaster. Now true enough, Project Magnet was no secret. You can go find their geomagnetic data from NOAA. It ran from 1951 to 1994, flying all over the world doing their geomagnetic surveys. But there was at least one mission that was not so truthful or public, and it had them hit every magnetic anomaly, the future poles of the planet as current patterns would show, and included an in-depth look at the eye of Africa. Combined with Jimmy's previous work, I have to agree, this was likely one of the centers, if not the capital, of Atlantis. In addition to the data we have, the document clearly makes reference to the difference between the science data they'd share with the world and something else. Even in declassification, they refuse to let those last paragraphs go, and they reference it as being the opposite of the unclassified science data. What exactly were they doing in secret with this mission in 1967? Don't forget, at this point, Project Nanook has shown them the reversal pattern, the 12,000-year cycle, and the CIA man pretending to be a professor, Charles Hapgood, had already begun assaulting the public with his nonsensical version that would be easily debunked and tank the whole field. They had just classified Chan Thomas's work and then came the secret aspect of Project Magnet. We will likely never know what those paragraphs actually said. But head over to watch Jimmy's video and thank him as well from the observers. And then afterwards, maybe catch up on the cover-up of Catastrophe. That video is not in the most recent 12,000-year cycle playlist normally under your news, but the 2020 disaster playlist with Major White's face on the cover, the cover-up of Catastrophe. And if I may add on to Jimmy's conclusion, 
this being the center of Atlantis. If indeed that is so, they were washed into the sea. The Eye of Africa is about where the little star is here, jutting out into the flatter parts of the continent. And for those who have seen the Earth Tilt Driven Tsunami videos we have, Northwestern Africa gets the absolute worst. Surge tide as the tilt occurs coming in from the north, and then the slosh back from the south, with neither one having anything stopping them from washing right over what many in the community now believe was the capital of the world when the last disaster occurred 12,000 years ago. We greatly appreciate your support. Eyes on the sun for those CME impacts. Hopefully the KP stays where it's supposed to. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.